The information in this module is accurate and complete to the best of our knowledge. All recommendations are made without guarantee on the part of the author or the sponsoring institutions. The author and the sponsoring institutions disclaim any liability in connection with the use of this information. Welcome to the Genome Annotation Lecture. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to understand how much of the human genome stands for protein coding genes. Identify the types of repeats that can be found in eukaryotic genomes. Explain how and when you could use algorithmic approaches for gene annotations. Know how to find the regulatory elements in the human sequence. Explain what is gene ontology. After our genome is completely sequenced and assembled, it can then be annotated. We can locate features in the genome by eye, just by looking for patterns in the sequence. But we use computer experimental analysis, which is domain of the science of bioinformatics. These operations are performed individually using computer programs designed to find genes using sequences of exons and introns, regulatory sequences such as TATA boxes or finding poly A addition sites and repetitive elements. Once genes are identified, other programs could search for their homologs in other species. The following lecture describes how these annotation programs in many eukaryotes a large proportion of the genome is repetitive. In order to start annotating, the repetitive elements should be masked or covered. This is achieved by comparing your genome with the repetitive element datasets, like repeat masker. These databases are constantly updated and refined. In the human genome, repeats like microsatellites Many satellites, transposable elements, constitute over 40% of the entire sequence, while in corn, the repetitive content is as high as 90% due to the expansion of transposable elements. Here, you can see an output of the repeat mask research, a database of repetitive elements found and masked, and a summary table showing their percentages in the genome sequence. Protein coding genes are rare. In human genome, they represent only 46 megabases out of 3.2 gigabase of the entire genome sequence. In other species, like maize, the percentage could be even smaller. The majority of the genome is in the form of introns and intergenic sequence that includes various types of repetitive elements satellite DNA, and transposable elements. Genes are predicted by analyzing genome sequence. Anything between ATG and a termination codon like TAG is considered an open reading frame, ORF. There would be too many of these as genes can exist in three coding frames and it's sometimes not obvious which one is the real one. Some genes can be found using examination of base composition differences between coding versus non-coding regions. Specifically, intron and exon boundaries are found this way. There are many models developed that are good for finding genes. This is called computational gene recognition, uh, finding exons, introns, exon-intron boundaries, etc. using variety of gene finding algorithms. Example, Glimmer, Grail, GeneScan, etc. Alternatively, genes can be found by using genes from other species that have been deposited into public databases. Some of the examples are RefSeq and SwissProd, as well as Hugo from NCBI, UCSC, and Ensemble. Any gene found by computational method needs to be identified by other methods to make sure it is really a functional gene and not a pseudogene. 
This kind of evidence can come from transcriptome alignments. Existence of the RNA transcript that aligns to a gene in your genome means that the gene is in fact functioning and making RNA. Remember that RNA sequence comes in short reads as well, so it also needs to be assembled. Two different assembly methods are used for producing a transcriptome from raw sequence reads, de novo and genome guided. The first approach does not rely on the presence of the reference genome in order to reconstruct the nucleotide sequence. An easier and relatively computationally cheaper approach is that of aligning the millions of reads to a reference genome. The latter approach can also be used to map mRNA transcript to a genome. In other words, to perform evidence-based gene identification. This method can also allow to identify RNA isoforms to see if there are different forms of the RNA expressed from the same gene in different tissues. RNA is expressed not only for the protein coding genes, so transcripts allow genes to be found that may not be predicted otherwise. Examples are regulatory elements that are shown above. Regulatory elements can show differential activity across tissues and therefore can be identified by applying various functional genomic assays, including DNAs1 hypersensitive sites or ChIP-seq peaks. Or they can be found by looking for the evolutionary conserved elements by cross-species sequence alignment. Aligning across many species in comparative studies can identify genes and other functional elements like Tata box in this example, because conservation across species is a good signature of an important functional element. Many genome projects end in computational annotation only, but a good approach would be to find RNA evidence. In practice, depending on the time and effort the research head can put in the annotation, three study scenarios are possible. First, to predict the genes, to use a single predictor and just report the ORFs. Second, to predict and choose, to run a battery of predictors and choose the best coding sequences. At least you would have multiple lines of evidence that could exclude bias for some of the gene predictors. Finally, predict and compare with RNA evidence. First, run a battery of gene predictors, compare them with mRNA evidence, and which is what is now recommended. But, of course, it will cost additional money to get RNA evidence from different tissues in your species. Here you can see a list of useful tools that can be used for annotation of your genome project. This list is by no means exclusive or exhaustive, as the genome research is really difficult to keep up with nowadays, with a lot of new information coming every day. Here is an example of an annotation report with a genome size, number of repeats, and genes found in three related genomes of the Irish potato famine pathogen Phytophthora. Once functional elements are annotated, they can be compared to many other organisms and help annotate their genomes. Human genes they can therefore be compared to genomes of other organisms as well. And we can see that we share many genes with other species as far as prokaryotes. And only about 1% of our genes have no known homologies, meaning they're unique to humans. This will begin a study called comparative genomics which is a field defined as comparing the nucleotide sequences of genomes. It can provide new information about relationship between various taxonomic groups, but that will be a topic of one of the future lectures. Here are some review questions following our today's lecture. In this lecture, we have covered genome annotation. The next lecture will explore 
finding genome variation.